QuickBooks Online 2022. Create invoices using billable time, receive payment, and make deposit. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with a 30-day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125%. We're currently in the home page, currently called the Get Things Done page. in the business view as compared to the accounting view if you wanted to change to the accounting view it's something you can do by going to the cog up top and switching to the accounting view down below we will be toggling back and forth between the two views either by going here or jumping over to the sample company file currently in the accounting view going back to quick the get great guitars opening up a few tabs up top by right clicking on the tab up top duplicating it we're going to put some reports in these tabs that's why we're opening them up back to the tab to the left right click and duplicate and back to the tab to the left and right click and duplicate one more time as that is thinking let's locate where the reports are at in the accounting view with the sample company that's in the accounting view it's in the side area that says reports right there going back to the business view to locate the reports in the second tab it's in the business overview section and then it's in the reports right there closing up the hand boogie and we're then going to go down to the balance sheet one of the faves of course and doing the range change up top from 010122 to 1231.22 run it back tap to the right tap to the right this time going back to the business overview closing up the hand boogie and then we're going down to the profit and loss the pnl the income statement range change from 0101222 1231 run it tap to the right and then we're going to do this one more time business overview we want to be in the reports going to close up the hand boogie and go down to the profit and loss again this time looking at the p and l for the month of february as opposed to the year to date that means we're going to start off in the range change at 0201222123122 run it this is what we have thus far for just the month of feb versus to the left tab what we have thus far for the year to date jan and feb here and then we have the balance sheet as of the current point in time which is you know we're working on the month of february okay first tab in the prior presentations we're imagining that we have our billable time and we've got our our workers that are then charging billable time as guitar instructors and tracking their time on a timesheet that we are then putting into the system to track their billable time. Remember that you can do that or you can try to do that through the paychecks information to try to track the time that they are putting in place with timesheets. But uh, we're not going to do that right now. That might be one way that you can track the time. But remember, there's multiple ways that you can track the time. You can have them just track it on an Excel worksheet or something like that and then <clears throat> give you that information or possibly actually populate it into the system up here we're using the time that they work on to put into to, to build the client with this is not something we're doing in order to count the time in order to charge the the uh, employee for payroll in other words to process the payroll you might use the time for that reason as well but here we're looking at that billable time that we can charge to the employees making our invoices from the uh, billable time so we're going to hit the drop down in the prior presentation we did this by going into the weekly time sheets under the employees area and we had our two employees erica and adam so let's start off with adam and we were looking at then february we put this information for february down here and we had the two hours for customer one and customer two four hours for the week at $75 so that would be 300 that we would expect to be charging to customer one 300 that we would ex be expecting to charge to customer two for Adam and then I can go to Erica and look at Erica's information for customer three and four and she charged uh, the the four hours and four hours we would be billing at the rate of 115 for 460 
So now we're going to pull this over to an invoice, those billable items now allowing us to pull right into an invoice, which is nice. So now we're going to say, let's hit the plus button up top and pull up the invoice. Invoicing the new customer, which has the strange name of just simply customer number one. Customer number one, Mr. One, he's sometimes called. Uh, has these two items on the left hand side so we got the the two items we can add them both here or we could just say saving a left click add all and then we just add all the items down there if we scroll through this thing we're going to say this happened on, let's say on the 27th it's going to be 227 that is and then when we scroll down it pulled in the information with re with the hours the guitar lessons uh, two hours at 75, the 150, and then the 150. It's linking, of course, to the timesheet. If we were to go here, you'd see the billable time link, which is nice. We have no tax that is being applied because we said it's not a taxable item because it's going to be a service item, straightforward transaction. Then we're going to be increasing the accounts receivable, increasing the sub report for the customer one, and increasing the revenue by the 300 no impact on inventory on sales tax on cost of goods sold so nice and easy let's save it and close it and see what happens so i'm going to save it and then i'm going to go back and put this in the hamburger back into let's just put this on the home page i'm going to go to the balance sheet tab to the right close up the handbooky hold down control scroll up just a bit let's run it again to make sure we've got fresh material we're looking in and let's drill down on the ar because it was an invoice and that means ar should increase with the invoice so we're going to go down and say on the 27th there it is ar increased from the invoice let's go back up top and go back to the balance sheet scroll in tab right and then let's go to the income statement run it again so we're working on fresh stuff again it should be a service item this time because we didn't sell any inventory so we'll go into the services here holding control scrolling down and we see then here's our two items that put up there at the two line items so that's good for the invoice going back up top back to our our profit and loss this is where we stand on the year to date information at this point in time. If we wanted to look at just the month of Feb, -E, we can run this one on the tab to the right, tab to the right. And there's the 300 that shows up there. So this is what we're doing just for that particular uh, month. Let's do the same thing for customer number two, back to the first tab, holding control, scrolling down back to that one, two, five percent. Let's go to the plus button and say we're making another invoice. And this time for the other customer, which happens to also be called customer, but then two, customer two. These people must be related. They all want to learn the guitar. They've all got similar names. And then we can add these two. I'm going to add them all by just hitting that one button once again, putting them all in place. And then I'm going to say this is on two, uh, 227, 227, and scrolling down. Then once again, pulls in the information links to the timesheet this is going to be increasing the the accounts receivable the customer sub ledge and revenues no sales tax no inventory no cost of goods sold do we have to deal with which is nice let's do the save and new this time and do the other one for the other people that i think are related customer number three that is save and new save and new i'm gonna have to ask them next time these guys come in Hey, customer three, are you related to customer one and two? Because you've got like similar names. Customer number three, we're going to pull in that billable stuff, add in the whole thing. One click to do so. And then we're going to scroll down. Same kind of scenario down below, pulling that stuff in from the timesheet with the link. AR going up by the 460 sales going up sub ledge for customer number three. Also mirroring that increase. Uno Vase Moss with number four one more time. Save it and new it. And let's go to number four. They've got a big family, these people. Here's customer number four also wants guitar lessons. So we'll pick up customer number four, adding up these, add all of them, pulling them into the to where our stuff is. And we're gonna charge that one once again 450 increasing 
on the AR, increasing the sales, increasing the AR subledger. No inventory, no sales tax, no cost of goods sold. Let's save it and close it this time. Give a double check on the balance sheet to see all this activity taking place. So we're we're getting excited with our billing items here until we until we realize these people are fake people that just came in for guitar lessons for free. And I don't know. I know I'm not sure we're going to collect on these. Something seems fishy. We're going to go into the AR. And we're going to go down and say that we've got then the customer one, two, three, and four invoices in place. That looks good. Going back up top, we're going to go back to our balance sheet, hold control, scroll up just a bit. And then we're going to go to the tab to the right, tab to the right, tab to the right. And then we'll run it again, run it. And this is going to be in the services area. Let's go into the services area. And then we've got all of the stuff that we charged for these customers. That looks like it should, I believe. Let's go back to the report. And this is where we stand for the year to date information. Tab to the right. We get then the income statement just for the month of Feb. I should just be running a comparative report, but that's okay. Here's the Feb. And now let's open up another report, <clears throat> which is going to be the sub ledge for the A to the R. So right clicking, duplicate another one. And let's look at the sub ledge for the activity for these customers. Going to go into the reports, going to close the hand boogie, and we're going to scroll down and we're looking for the who owes you stuff, the who owe you category. These people owe us money. Customer one, two, three, and four, we're going to say this is customer balance detail. That's the one we want. Going up top, and we're going to say that uh, let's change the range here because I'm working in the future working in the future this is going to be a custom range let's do this as a 1231.22 and run it and then we've got customer one two three and four here we can also see that information and track it if we went to the first tab holding control down and we might say let's go into the get paid pay area customer center you might call it if you were in the sample company it would be in the sales tab that that's what it would be in the accounting view that is in the business view it's over here in the get paid area customers area and then we can close up the handbook and we can go down here for example to customer number one and see that customer number one has that open invoice we can also search the open invoice by transactions tracking the open invoices possibly by going down to the bookkeeping area down below which if you were in the accounting view would simply be in the same sales tab into the sales transactions. But over here in the business view, it's up in the transactions in the bookkeeping area, closing up the handbook. You can then search here. We're on the sales items searching for the invoice is, and we can look at all of them. For example, to start off with, here's all the invoices. And then we might want to look at just the open ones, the open ones. The ones that I need to collect on. These are the people we need to be calling. Have we been calling these people, people? Collect, look at all this money that's on the table. Someone needs to be on the phone doing, sending out stuff because we need that cash. We need that cash. So then we're going to say that customer one paid us. Customer number one paid us. Well, that's good. Customer number one paid us. I feel a little better. We're collecting. I thought that was a made up name. I didn't think we we're going to get any money. Thought that was just some guy that was trying to get free guitar lessons, but apparently they paid us. So that's good. Customer number one, you could go into the invoice here and say receive payment. Or we can go up top and we can say let's hit the let's hit the plus button and say we got the receive payment, which is the next form here. And then we're going to say this is going to be customer number one. Number one, you're number one customer, you're number one. And I'm going to say this is going to go into the undeposited funds or otherwise known as the new account of the payment to deposit. Same kind of thing, different name. If we check off the 300 down below, there's the invoice. That means this is a receive payment, which means in AR is going to go down. 
sub ledger is going to go down and it's going to go into the clearing account which used to be called undeposited funds now called payments to deposit so we're going to save it and close it and then check that out save it close it go to the balance sheet the bs balance sheet and we're going to go up top and say let's run it again and now we've got in the clearing account we've got the we've got the clearing account payments to deposit right then right there going in to see what happened with it there's the 300 right there going back up top other side should be coming out of the a to the r a to the r a r accounts receivable people owe us money customers owe us money we track it in the a to the r accounts to the receivable a slash r so that's going to be a payment there's the payment there payment okay that looks like what we would expect let's scroll back up we're also going to go to the ar sub ledge breaking it out by a customer let's go up top and say let's run this one and freshen it up so we're working with fresh material here now i would like to see more detail customer one has disappeared because they're only showing us the invoices i want to see some customization if i could i thought this was a detailed report let's filter this thing and let's add some let's add some dates i, I want to say not the dates the ar paid all oh, that's what we want and then run it and now i can see the activity happening for customer numero uno customer numero uno we've got the payment happening here the invoice happening ticking and tying it out it going up it then going down invoice then payment we can also see that activity by going to the first tab going to the cust to the to the get paid center and to the customers and if i looked at customer number one that's our number one customer named customer number one there it is paid off invoice paid payment made well, let's go ahead and make the deposit because we got some stuff in that that clearing account which i can never remember the name anymore it used to be called undeposited funds if i go back to the balance sheet it now being called payments to deposit there's two items in there now adding up to the 400 we're going to imagine we're walking to the bank with that 400 dollars cash depositing it at one time or possibly it was a credit card transactions or something like that which we are going to be depositing the two transactions at one time it then hitting the bank statement on one lump sum number which we want to match on our books making the reconciliation process easy back to the tab to the left to do so holding down control scrolling down to that one two five the sweet spot of the zoom feet zooming going into the new button and we're going to go to the make a deposit we're going to put that money right in the bank and so we got cash it's going to be 227 so we got one payment and one sales receipt here for the 300 and the 100 i could check them both off here or i could just do one one check one check that's going to save some energy so i could stay up a little later tonight so now we're going to say this is going to be 400 that's going to go into the cash account in one lump sum so we can reconcile to the bank statement and it's going to come out of that that whatever that undeposited funds new name things to be deposited fund in the two accounts so we can do some ticking and tying let's save it and close it and check that out going back to the big balance the big balance sheet here we go running it the big balance the big bs balance okay so we're gonna go down here where am i i'm on the payments this one went down the payments to deposit down into zero and it did that by the two the two transactions down here if i scroll down so you can take in, you could do some ticking and tying seeing the activity that took place down there and if i go back up top and and go into the checking account it will be there not in two formats but in one lump sum the sum is one the sum is a lump there's one lump there's one giant lump of a sum right there four hundred dollars that's what we expect to see on the bank statement making us able to tick and tie this easy to the bank statement in the bank reconciliating process okay let's go to the trial balance and see where the trial balance stands tab to the right hitting the the ham boogie 
going down to the business overview and then the reports going to be closing up the hand boogie typing in trial balance for the test trustee tb not tuberculosis trial balance and run in the range change oh one oh one two 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 twelve thirty one two two run it this is where we stand these are our two legs check it out if your numbers match out great if not try to range change sometimes it's a date issue we'll be taking a look at a transaction detail report at the end of the section which is great for detecting any differences